Hey you guys, my name is Brittany and welcome back to my YouTube channel. You guys, in today's video, I will be answering all of my unanswered comments. So I made this video a while back before here on my channel where I looked through all of my old videos and all of the questions that I forgot to answer or more of my mostly commonly asked questions in my comment section, I made a video for you guys uh, just uh, finally answering those questions. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that today. I went ahead and I put all of you guys' comments, uh, I screenshot them and I put them here on my clipboard um, so I can answer like my most commonly asked questions. I really have been trying my best to keep up with the comment section, but I'm going to be completely honest. It is really hard to try to keep up with your comment section um, in your like YouTube videos. I do my best, but uh, when the questions are a little bit more elaborate, uh, like I always say, I tend to forget to come back to those questions uh, and I I tend to answer the simpler ones but we are going to elaborate and I'm going to answer all of you guys's questions um, I hope you guys really enjoy these videos so um, here we go first and foremost I get a lot of questions about my homeschool room in particular where I got like my homeschool chairs from my table uh, that the kids do their schoolwork on and my homeschool chairs I actually purchased them from Amazon I recently created an Amazon storefront so like all of my homeschool favorites I went ahead and I actually uh, have them all in my storefront for you guys so the chairs are in my storefront as far as my uh, desk and my tables inside of my homeschool room I actually purchased them from Ikea like a long time ago like 2016 was when I purchased those so we actually had these tables before we moved into this house before um, yeah, so it's been a minute. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that is where I have like most of like my main setup as far as like my homeschool furniture and things like that. Um, all of my other little trinkets like this new little shelf right here. My mom actually purchased this from Home Goods. A lot of you guys asked me where I got that from. A lot of like the baskets and things that I get in my homeschool room, I get them from Five Below and the Dollar Tree. So those are like my most commonly asked questions as far as like my homeschool room. Now, my second most commonly asked question is always, where do I get like my school nest notebooks from? Um, so this is like my daughter's vocabulary notebook, her history notebook. She's used this homeschooling year. And of course, I have my planner that I love. This is my school nest uh, homeschooling planner. And then also to you guys, I got some new goodies for next year. Um, I really didn't know which planner I wanted to use. So I have uh, the older version of the, I guess the big boy of the school nest planner she recently um, came out with new designs in her planners and you guys like something's wrong with me so I have another one of her newer designs this tie-dye one is really really cute so um, I have two planners to kind of like choose from with the next couple of homeschooling years and also this year I went ahead and I decided to get my oldest daughter her own planner and she's really really excited to use this she's definitely a paper and a pen type of girl so um, when it comes to the school nest planners I definitely will say go to her website because you're able to to navigate like the colors that you want the specific notebooks the specific planners and things like that and then it will uh, I guess direct you to Amazon where you can purchase it and I'm gonna go ahead and link down below uh, the school nest website that I use so I can kind of see all of the colors and the different styles and things like that as far as her notebooks and I'm able to get exactly what I want it's easier to navigate it through her website than trying to type it in on Amazon directly so I'm gonna link her website down below if you guys are interested in using like the school nest notebooks for your upcoming homeschool year like I always say these are just things that I love and enjoy in my homeschool I do not think you need it to have a successful and a fruitful homeschooling year these are just things that bring me joy so um, those are like my most commonly asked questions as far as like the simpler ones. Now you guys, let's go ahead and get on into uh, the rest of the questions that I have in my comment section. And the number one question that I recently have received, especially in my seventh graders homeschooling curriculum pick video is, I would love to know like more information on where you're going to be doing Microsoft Office for your um, upcoming um, seventh grader. So I will let you know, um, I have two places that I'm looking into doing Microsoft Office where my oldest is going to be learning um, Word, Excel, Access, PowerPoint. Um, on OutSchool, they have a eight week um, 
um, Microsoft Office course that she can do where it's going to be like a live instructor actually teaching her through the Microsoft uh, course and that's one of my options. My second option is to go uh, and use typec.com, which has a specific uh, group for like homeschoolers who are using it. Um, typec is actually where you can do like uh, keyboarding online, uh, like your kiddos learning how to type and keyboard. Um, they also have an additional like subscription for uh, learning again that Microsoft Office, Excel, uh, Word, PowerPoint as well. And they have it broken down into four courses for each of those particular units. So those are the two places that I'm looking at into doing the Microsoft Office, um, uh, I guess, program for my oldest this upcoming homeschool year. So um, hopefully that answers you guys' questions when it comes to that. And I don't have any type of reviews or anything on these uh, programs because, again, I haven't tried them just yet. But those are the resources I am going to be using for her. As far as creative writing, uh, here in my local community, we actually have a like in-person creative writing course um, that she can take. But she has to turn or it's not until she turns 13 when she can actually join that like creative writing club like in person. So that's not going to be until uh, January of next year when she'll be able to go. Uh, start doing that particular workshop. Other than that, I have seen a few cool creative writing courses on OutSchool uh, that she is going to do, especially over the summer. She really, really enjoys um, being able to brainstorm and uh, get different like writing ideas and prompts with the instructors on OutSchool. So that is another place where I do utilize OutSchool in my homeschool. So uh, my next question I have is, and I've received this question a lot, is I am curious to why you didn't use Oak Meadow for your first grader. And I definitely will say, you guys, that was the hardest decision for me in my homeschool because I really, really, really love Oak Meadow. Like it really has worked so well for my uh, middle schooler. Um, it just flows with her because of the independence and the autonomy that she has and the fluidness of the curriculum. It just works for her. She's a self-starter. She's motivated. And um, it gives her that rigor and that challenge that she needs. Um, she's written high quality literature. So it just works out really, really well for her. And I know Oak Meadow is really, really known uh, primarily for their um, elementary years as far as it being a great program to use. And I was so tempted to do it with my rising first grader. The only reason why I chose not to do Oak Meadow just yet for her, because I do think Oak Meadow is in our future for my younger two is because they have a separate reading and a math program uh, that's like all in one. Uh, so their math, reading, social studies, art is all together in their one course book. And because we already have started our own like reading program with All About Reading and our math program, Math with Confidence, Math You See, I feel like it would have been too much for me to try to juggle doing Oak Meadow grade one along with the, I guess, the courses and the curricula that we already are using and is working well in our homeschool. Um, however, after I believe the Oak Meadow passes like that phonics portion, I really do think that I want to try out their elementary years with my younger ones because I really, really enjoy it. So hopefully that answers you guys' question. It really was just because I wanted to keep things more seamless and I kind of didn't want to try too many new pieces in our homeschool all at once, especially while I'm still helping my oldest one get a footing in her curricula and things like that. Even though she's independent, I do have to come in on the back end and I do wanna to continue to have, I guess, that time that I have for her and not necessarily me spending a lot of time trying to figure out another piece of curriculum in our upcoming homeschool year. So uh, the next question that I have, and I get this question all the time, is how do I schedule two math curriculums, um, especially interested in like first grade? Do you do uh, both every day? Do you do a whole week of math with confidence plus a whole week of math you see in the same week? Or do you spread things out over the summer? So when it comes to doing two math uh, curriculas in my homeschool, a lot of you guys are interested in like how I uh, manage two uh, math curriculas. I will say number one, uh, off the bat, I knew in managing two math curriculums, I had to, I guess, separate it in my head, which math, which one of these math programs is 
my main and which one is going to be my supplement and extra practice. And then I will be able to prioritize my main versus the one that I'm using for extra practice. So in my homeschool for my littles, their main um, math curriculum is math with confidence. That is my primary math that I focus on completing each week, every single week. So uh, when it comes to uh, like our math, like let's just say if we're having like an off day, we always will get math with confidence done. However, math you see, I use the primer and the alpha, especially for my first grader, as that additional facts, practice, fluency, and she loves that math because she gets to use those blocks. And um, that's I know that's definitely the star of math you see is when the kids are able to tinker with the blocks and they really are able to tinker with them a lot in the younger years versus up there, like how my oldest is in pre-algebra. They do have the manipulatives, but she doesn't use them as often as my youngest daughter does use it when she does her math. Um, so I know, um, like, let's just say if we're having a regular day, she will do her uh, math with confidence and her math you see following it. So math with confidence is a four day week program. So it's just Monday through Thursday. I do do some type of enrichment school on Fridays for all of my kids. And because math with confidence is only a four day a week program, we always do math you see only on Fridays. So when she only has math you see, she tends to do more than one worksheet at a time. So typically on a a good week we are able to uh, do one full week of math with confidence one full week of math you see but if it doesn't happen like that I'm okay with it because I know I'm using math you see as my supplementary math um, now I just want to let you know if you do want to do two math cur curriculums in your homeschool you don't have to do like two full math curriculums. You can do your main math curriculum and like let's just say if your kiddo is struggling with multiplication, division, you wanna work some more on fractions, percentages, you can use a lot of books, especially the Kumon books are my favorite. Uh, you can definitely add that in as your supplementary math instead of you trying to squeeze in two main math programs. I believe the purpose of doing two math programs is to work on whatever, uh, I guess, a skill you want your kid to master uh, that's going to support their main curriculum and that's how I see it so hopefully that answers you guys' questions um, like you guys at the end of this homeschooling year I believe we're going to end off in our Matthew C primer for my uh, kindergartner we're probably going to be at week 25 and it's a 30 week program so I'm going to just finish off the rest over the summer and then we'll begin alpha at the beginning of our you know new homeschooling year and that's just going to be how it goes I'm going to focus again like on our primary math and I'm using the secondary one as a supplement. So my next question I received is we're looking at jumping into IEW for my fifth grader in the fall with the structure and style. Uh, did you, Do you think the teaching training is useful and is needed and have you done it or did you just start with IEW? And I still get this question you guys a lot when it comes to IEW structure and style. Uh, we have done or I am on my second level of IEW structure and style with my oldest and I have yet to do the teacher's uh, train the teacher teacher's uh, training program when it comes to the IEW structure and style. Now, I'm not saying that it's not useful, uh, but I definitely will say for me, it was just useful for me to just use my teacher's guide when it came to using IEW structure and style um, and also just sitting in on the videos with my oldest daughter. Now, when she did the IEW structure and style level 1A, I was like nervous about the program. I was really unfamiliar and literally like for the first unit, I just sat in and I just let Andrew Pudawa teach me along with my daughter. I had my teacher's guide and we were good to go. Um, I feel like sometimes it or when I first started, the IEW structure and style it was a little bit overwhelming because I didn't really know how the program worked but when I just sat in with the videos it was easy for me to follow through especially having my checklist and my teacher's guide and after that point I stopped watching the videos with my oldest and she I just was able to use my teacher's guide and that's how I maneuvered using the IEW structure and style um, I definitely know that the teaching portion of the IEW structure and style they have like more nuggets and it definitely is is useful information 
in that particular program however for me i found it just being beneficial for me just to watch the videos with my oldest now that she's in the middle school level the iew structure and style 1b um literally i just have been using my teacher's guide because i'm familiar with the program the layout what i'm looking for in all of her uh, papers when she turns them into me and um now i feel like i'm more fluid with the program i definitely will say you guys i'm not too sure if you know this about iew just yet but i recently received an email saying that IEW is now going to be launching like their grade book where they are going to be they're going to have some type of I guess online platform where you can submit your kids papers in for grading for like additional fee so similar to like how EIW you can buy like the grading services now you're going to be able to buy the IEW grading service and I believe it said it was going to be launching this summer of 2024 and I'm so excited because I feel like IEW I really really enjoy the program it's definitely some quirks if you want to see like my review um, of IEW I think I'll I have a playlist of IEW and I'll link it down below so you can kind of get more information on like all of my details my flip throughs my reviews and things like that of the program but I definitely will say that that was one of my quirks is having to grade my daughter's papers um, I feel like in the beginning that was the hardest part because um, she was just used to me just saying oh your papers are great and I felt like it was harder for me as a parent to give her more in-depth um, I guess grading and critiques especially that she wasn't used to it now she's definitely more used to it and she just knows what to expect but having a different voice to look at her papers is going to be invaluable and I promise you guys as soon as like I can sign up I'm signing up for the program and I'm letting them do the hard work and um, having that additional feedback on her papers is going to be great so I'm excited about uh, that for IEW and I'm so happy that they listened to a lot of the parents when it came to that portion of the program so yeah I'm excited about that you guys I'm off on a tangent all right, so let's see. Uh, let me go to the next question. And it says, uh, thank you for this video. I would like to see um, how I would like I would love to see how you get one on one time between your younger two daughters. I have a four year old and a two year old and the youngest is all over the place. Any tips or tricks? So I definitely will let you guys know when it comes to managing all of my kids, um, that was the hardest part of this homeschooling year because this is my first year where all of I really have been homeschooling all of my kids. And um, I'm going to be completely honest with you and share them with you what I do in managing all of my kiddos. So first and foremost, my oldest, she is just in this homeschool room when we're working. Her station is actually right here, the furthest, um, I guess, to the end. Uh, so she's not distracted with the littles. Uh, she puts on her headphones a lot of the times and she's able to get her work done. So I really don't rely on my oldest to help me in managing my younger two. I do it all on my own because I want her to focus on her work because I know a lot of people uh, especially with larger families they like to like pair up the kids and like piggyback and work one-on-one -on -one. I typically don't do that here in my homeschool so I always start working in my homeschool with my middle daughter my kindergartner uh, she's the one who I have to be very intentional with uh, she gets distracted the easiest and she's just all over the place I feel like that's always the middle child and um, I definitely make sure uh, things that I do with my youngest to ensure that when I do sit down and I have that one on one time with her. I want to make sure she's settled. Uh, I have this little rack right here that I typically keep uh, coloring books from. Uh, my youngest daughter, she loves the color, so I always grab these from the Dollar Tree. Uh, they are into Ello Dolls and Gabby House right now, so she definitely goes ahead and she grabs her markers, her crayons, and she colors. Something she's interested in right now, my littlest one, is puzzles. So I have like a lot of puzzles. So this rack right here has three puzzles, so she puts all three of the puzzles together she really really loves them it's so cute seeing her tinker with it so um this is not my only set of puzzles so i keep out puzzles for her on the floor so she's able to have something to occupy herself something else that i have is i have this paint with water again from the dollar tree that i use when i'm working one-on-one uh, -on -one with my kiddos i have my kumon cutting book and one of their favorites is like putty and play-doh i got this one from five below and those are like my main go-to's when i'm trying to do one-on-one -on -one lessons with my uh, kiddos so my youngest typically she's on here on the floor while i'm on a table 
Now, I will say uh, it's not always a perfect day where my youngest daughter will play with the activities that I have set out. And I'm going to be completely honest. Um, I do utilize screens in my homeschool when I'm doing one on one instructions um, on YouTube. I have created like a curated playlist for my younger daughter uh, when it comes to like videos that I turn on. So she watches like a lot of Jack Hartman videos, simple preschool videos. So when I do cut on a TV, I do know it's educational and I don't it makes me feel a little bit less guilty I feel like there's just personification or like it's this big thing where you have to be screen free and if you're not screen free you're doing it wrong and I definitely will say I believe screens they have a time and a purpose and I believe that you can get value from them when you use them properly and I just don't feel guilty when it's just one of those days I'm trying to get things done. My youngest doesn't want to cooperate. I cut that playlist on you guys. I let her watch her TV and I swap off so I can focus on what I need to focus on, which is educating my kids. And I don't feel guilty about it, especially when it comes to like these younger ages. Now, as my kiddos get older, I'm definitely going to, um, I guess, not necessarily use the screens. As they get older, they're going to still have like their designated like um, screen time in the evening like we typically do. And I'm not going to really use it throughout our school day because as they get younger, they get mature. They're really able to do more independent play. But in these younger years, I definitely, my advice to any of you guys is, don't feel guilty if you do have to use screens. Um, definitely using them, um, educational shows and things like that, you will be surprised. Um, Leapfrog, Letter Factory, you'll be surprised all the different things that they can learn um, by watching educational videos. And please don't feel guilty, mama. Like I have been in a phase where I have felt guilty in using screens, especially when my kiddos were little, but now I just don't feel guilty. So uh, my uh, last video or my one of my last uh, most commonly asked questions is, do I plan on putting my little kids in Matthew C? And do I have an ex do I have a video explaining why I chose math with confidence over Matthew C? No, I have I do not have a video yet on why math with confidence is my primary math versus Matthew C. Uh, I will be making my review videos for you guys, and I have to make my math with confidence review video because at this point we have finished kindergarten math with confidence, preschool math with confidence. Um, I have done preschool math with confidence twice, and I've done kindergarten math with confidence once, and now my youngest order is in kindergarten math of confidence this is my second go around we've already started first grade math of confidence as well i feel like i have a lot to say about this program i absolutely love it and i definitely will make a video dedicated to math of confidence because a lot of you guys have asked about that um, another one of my questions I have is, do I have any ideas to, uh, to make Math with Confidence not so overwhelming for the teacher? I am using Math with Confidence um, K level right now and not too sure if we will continue with level one this next year or not. Considering trying Apology of Math level one, busy mom of five soon to be six kids dealing with major burnout, so I need to find ways to simplify however possible. Now, a lot of people do say math with confidence, um, you do have to plan and prep it. And I definitely will say it definitely isn't a curriculum where you can just open and go and just start the next lesson. You do have a lot of games and maneuvering pieces you're using. I definitely will say with any curriculum, even if you do decide to use Apology and Math, you do need to make sure the night before or even the morning before I start my lessons with my kiddos, I lay everything out on my table that I need to use, my uh, manipulatives, my flashcards, my money that we're gonna be using, and I put them in these little baskets for them on top of their math. So I have everything prepared the night before. The day before I do the lessons, before even any of my kids come upstairs in the homeschool room, I read over all of the lessons one more time to ensure that I'm teaching it properly. Um, so I definitely will say when it comes to math with confidence, uh, you just have to set the things up before you do your lessons, have everything all out ready to go. And I feel like the lessons will go a lot smoother. Okay, you guys, I'm about to do school with the kiddos and I just want to show you how simple I set up all of their math with confidence for them. So this right here is my first graders math with confidence for today. And we are going to review the lesson we already went over yesterday 
yesterday because I feel like she needs a little bit more practice on this skill. So we're going to review lesson 4.4. So all I needed for this lesson was my 10 frame and my counters just for the review portion because I'm only going to be doing the second half of this lesson which starts right here for her. And then we'll go ahead and do the enrichment exercise too today for my first grader which pretty much is the review and the picture book. Now I don't have this week's picture book for us to do today, but what I do have is I have the last two weeks picture books that we can go ahead and read um, along with us reviewing over uh, the plus two and plus one facts for her. So no workbook pages for my first grader, just the enrichment exercise with the books and us reviewing over that math concept I wanna get her etched in stone in. So. That is how I prepped her uh, math with confidence. Now for my kindergartner or my pre-K four, she's on the same lesson. She's on lesson 4.4. .4, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be playing a game of memory. So I already have my two sets of uh, numbers one to 10 for us to play her memory game. And then also too, I needed a 10 frame counter for her and our flashcards and some counters. And I put everything I need in the basket, even the amounts of counters that I need. So all I have to do is just come into this lesson, uh, uh, read it and I am like good to go. It's like nothing else I have to do. Um, I don't have to scramble for like my math box or things that I need. Everything for each of the kiddos is in their little baskets. I got these little baskets from the Dollar Tree and I absolutely love them. So that is how I prepare my math with confidence for two of my kiddos. So um, I'm ready to go for them. I feel like personally the benefits of the program versus the planning and the prep is worth it for me. Um, so, and I don't mind it. I'm definitely used to it. I don't, I do not feel overwhelmed doing more than one level of math with confidence now that I'm doing kindergarten and first grade. As long as I get, again, like I said, I have all of my little supplies that I need for each of the kiddos. I read over the lesson before I call them all inside of the homeschool room. Uh, our math goes seamlessly. So I definitely will say math with confidence does require a little bit more prep. Just make sure you uh, prep it either the night before or before you start your lessons and hopefully that will help things go a little bit more smoothly and you're not like digging in your math box trying to find things as you're reading the lesson because uh, it definitely will be overwhelming and frustrated if you do it that way. So you guys, these were like one of our, my most commonly asked questions here on my channel. You guys, if you have any more questions for me, please leave them down in the comment section below and I'm gonna do my best to answer them. I really hope you enjoyed this video, this chit chatty video that I'm catching up with you guys. Um, another one of the questions that I have received a lot is Oak Meadows planning for my oldest. Don't worry, I am making my planning video for you guys so you can see how I plan out her uh, week when it comes to Oak Meadow and how I keep things seamless and um, I guess uh, float fluid for her to be able to work independently. So you guys, as always, thank you so much for watching today's video and I look forward to seeing everybody in my next one. Bye.